antihypertensive therapy has been uh, on the forefront in the COVID uh, virus pandemic uh, because we know that hypertensive patients are having a higher mortality from the COVID illness as well as other conditions like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, and other comorbidities like uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. I'm Dr. Carl schiff -Levy. I'm uh, a professor of medicine and medical director of cardiac rehabilitation and preventive cardiology and director of the exercise laboratories here at the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute, Oshner Clinical School, the University of Queensland School of Medicine here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I also happen to be one of the associate editors and the cardiovascular section editor of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. But I'm here today to discuss our paper entitled Angiotensin Converting Enzyme 2 and Antihypertensives, Angiotensin Receptor Blockers and ACE Inhibitors in Coronavirus Disease 2019 or COVID-19, which is now published online and will be an upcoming issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Now, most of my co-authors on this paper are from Italy and Spain, and they've really been on the front lines of fighting this deadly virus. The first and lead author is Dr. Dr. Fabian Sanchez Gomar from the, the University of Valencia in Spain from the Department of uh, Exercise Physiology and Medicine, also a faculty member at the Stanford University. The senior authors are Dr. Brandon Henry uh, from uh, Children's Hospital in Ohio and Dr. Giuseppe Lippi uh, from the University of Verona in Italy and especially Dr. Lippi uh, and as well as my other Spanish uh, co-authors have really been on the front lines fighting this deadly COVID virus. In fact, uh, uh, some of my co-authors have even had friends and close colleagues succumb to this deadly disease. And we've been getting hit hard here in New Orleans as well um, uh, at Ashna. Uh, because New Orleans, unfortunately, is one of the leaders in the United States of America in the amount of COVID cases. But one of the main antihypertensive agents is, of course, the ACE inhibitors and ARBs. They're guideline-directed therapy and one of the main agents in the guidelines to treat many patients with hypertension. And certainly many clinicians have been using these agents as first-line therapy in treating diabetic hypertensives because they protect the diabetic kidney and they improve insulin sensitivity. They're certainly the drugs of choice in patients with hypertension and chronic kidney disease. And they're one of the main drugs that we use uh, for patients with heart failure, uh, particularly uh, the systolic form of heart failure. But there's an issue with the ACE inhibitors and ARBs that's very uh, unique and, and, and very important to the COVID pandemic. We know that one of the sites of the virus entry, the virus that, that is involved with COVID-19 into the cell is at the ACE2, which is the enzyme that converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 in the lungs, uh, in other tissues, and in other organs. And there's some evidence that because of this, that th at least some have been suggesting that the ACE inhibitors and ARBs may make it more likely to develop the COVID infection in the first place. There's probably even more evidence that being on these agents could actually lessen the severity of the lung injury in severe COVID. And of course, that's the, the thing that's very important is that pa some patients are getting very serious lung injury uh, and needing uh, to even be put on the ventilators. And that's the usual cause of death in patients with severe COVID. Uh, and our article really reviews all of the evidence for clinicians about this controversy and goes into very details about the mechanisms. And I think right now, the wealth of information is that these agents are actually helpful and probably even more so the ARBs. Now, certainly much more evidence is needed. A lot of data needs to be collected and analyzed. Um, but certainly right now, uh, patients on these agents for clinical reasons, these agents should not be discontinued. Uh, and, and in fact, if a COVID patient has indications for these agents, for example, severe hypertension 
or heart failure, these agents uh, should still be started. But notably, uh, angiotensin II is known to foster inflammation, oxidation, vasoconstriction, uh, and fibrosis. So it's quite conceivable that a pharmacologic agent that inhibits the production of this hormone could actually be very beneficial for preventing the lung injury, but also for improving systemic health. And it's certainly premature right now to be starting these agents as a preventative form uh, for COVID or for patients who have COVID and no other indications for these agents. But this is an active area of investigation and probably even uh, more so with the angiotensin receptor blockers. I hope that this video, but especially our article, is helpful for clinicians dealing with this important issue on the front line, taking care of patients with COVID, but also for the clinical scientists who are studying ways to improve the prognosis of patients with not only this disease for this pandemic, but also possibly for other uh, diseases in the future that deal with the ACE2. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.